Hi, eighth graders. This is Miss Truzell. I'm a school counselor at Pickwax and Middle School, and I am here with my fellow coworker. Good morning. I'm Mr. Marcioni, the other counselor here at Pickwax and Middle School. And we are here to lead you through your career cruising lesson in hopes of helping you prepare for what classes you want to pick when you go to high school. So to help you through this, we've included some attachments that you're going to need to open. The first thing to open would be the forms attachment. The forms attachment is going to guide you through the career cruising lesson to help you follow the career clusters that you'll need to know and what high schools offer what. So here we go. First thing you're gonna do after you open up that forms is you're gonna type your last name in. And in this case, we have a Smith. First name, Jane. Next, you're gonna select your language arts teacher. Now you can see we're using pick wax and teachers right now for our students but you're, so we'll have your teachers listed there. So select your language arts teacher. Next, you'll select the period that you have language arts. And this just allows us uh, counselors to be able to organize the information. So now we're going to look at question five. It says, looking at the career cluster groups attachment Select a career cluster that I am interested in. So we're gonna open up that career cluster attachment. So here we have our career clusters. There's 10 of them in Maryland. And the first one is arts, media, and communication. It's graphic communications and interactive media are two things that follow underneath of it. And the nice little bold next to that is NPHS. That stands for North Point High School. It lets you know what high school the career cluster is offered at. And if you scroll down to the bottom of this wonderful document, it has a key that shows you all the different high school shortcut initials. It also tells you that the star stands for you have to apply for that program. Just like interactive media is offered at Steedham. And it has a star because you have to apply to it as well. The next uh, career cluster is business management and finance. And underneath that heading, we have business management as the CTE program that connects to that cluster. And business management is offered at all high schools. Next one is information and technology. IT Networking Academy, which is offered at North Point. Cybersecurity is also offered at North Point but computer, computer science is offered at all high schools. So when it's offered at all high schools, you don't have to apply. They're just courses that you will elect to take on your course selection sheet. Remember the stars mean you have to apply. The next career cluster is consumer services, hospitality, and tourism. The first CTE program listed is culinary arts, and that's offered at North Point High School. And as Ms. Truzel just said, the star next to it means you have to apply to it. You would apply to that program going in, well, apply to it during eighth grade going into your ninth grade year. The next program is Food and Beverage Management, Pro Start. That's offered at three different high schools. You have LHS, which is Lackey High School, THHS, which is Thomas Stone High School, and WHS, which is Westlake High School. Next, you have Cosmetology. That is only offered at North Point High School and you have to apply to that program. And lastly is Career Research and Development, or CRD, and that is offered at all high schools. Next cluster is the Health and Biosciences. Very popular for anyone that's going into those professional fields of nursing or a doctor. So you have your Academy of Health Professions, which is at Steedham with a star. Certified Nursing Assistant is at North Point. Pharmacy Technician and physical rehabilitation, both offered at Steedham that you have to apply to. PLTW's Project Lead the Way, Biomedical Sciences, and that seems to be offered almost at all the high schools. We have Lackey, La Plata, McDonough, St. Charles, Thomas Stone, and Westlake. And then biotechnology is offered at North Point with the application process. And you're gonna see, we keep saying this about the application process, because that starts November 23rd.
that is coming up here real soon. The next career cluster that we have here is the human resource Re human resources services. Um, first CTE program is the Maryland Fire and Rescue Institute, and that's at all high schools. We have criminal justice that is offered at North Point High School with an application. We have education careers, which is offered at North Point High School with an application. And then we have the Teacher Academy of Maryland, which is offered at all high schools, more commonly known as TAM. Next, we have our construction and development. Construction design and management is at North Point with the application. Heating, ventilating, and air conditioning is offered at Steatham with an application. Electrical construction is at North Point and welding technology is at North Point. Both of those require the application process. Next, we have transportation technologies. The first program we have is automotive technician and that's offered at North Point High School with an application and Steedham with an application. One thing that we should let you know is any program that you see here where it's offered at Steedham with an application, you won't be able to apply to that program until your 10th grade year going into your 11th grade year. So North Point you can apply for, for an automotive technician in eighth grade. For the one that's at Steedham, you would apply for it in 10th grade going into 11th grade. And then you also have collision repair which is a North Point program, so you can apply for it in eighth grade going into ninth grade. Next, we have our manufacturing, engineering, and technology. Drafting and design is at North Point High School with an application process. We have project lead the way, pathway to engineering, which is offered at almost all the high schools. We have Lackey, La Plata, McDonough, St. Charles, Thomas Stone, and Westlake. We have manufacturing, engineering, Technologies, that's at North Point, along with engineering is at North Point, and both of those require an application process. And lastly, we have the last um, career cluster, environmental, agricultural, and natural resources. And we have one CTE program that covers that, the CASE program, uh, which is CASE Natural Resources, and that's at McDonough High School. And you would have to do an application for that program as well. Now that we have gone over the 10 career clusters for Maryland, we're going to switch back to our forms. And before you leave it, decide which one of these interests you the most. And that's going to help us answer question five. It says, looking at the career cluster groups attachment, select a career cluster I am interested in. Well, we have decided we'd like to look at the welding program. And welding is under the construction and development. So we're going to go ahead and check that. Okay, next, we're gonna log into Career Cruising. We're gonna select a career in Career Cruising that you're interested in that would fall under the cluster you chose. Name that career. So we know we talked about enjoying welding. Now we're gonna log into Career Cruising to check out different things that are offered for welding. So I'm gonna switch my tab to Career Cruising. I'm gonna to go to careercruising.com. Then I'm going to put in my username and password. So when you're doing career cruising, you're putting a username. You probably remember this from previous years. It's CC08-000, then your student ID number. Then your password. If you've never logged into career cruising before, it's going to be your birth date. It'd be the two digit month, the two digit day, and the four digit year. Like, for example, 0702-1986, uh, okay? But, well, you can't see that. There you go. But if you've logged in before, you've probably changed it to a password that you chose. If for some reason you've logged in before and you can't remember your password, you can reach out to your school counselors and they can give you your password. But other than that, you should be able to um, or you can click on the password question, forgot your name or password. You can click on this here. And if you put in an email address, it would then be able to get you your password. But again, if you can't figure it out, contact your school counselor and they can get you your password as well. Now, for Jane Smith, she's never logged on before. So if you never logged on before, the first thing it's going to ask is, do you want to enter your email? 
Now I'm going to go ahead and do that. They don't ask me again. And then I'm going to, this is all the terms and conditions. I'm going to say I read them and hit submit. <clears throat> and then that brings us to our homepage in Career Cruising. So now that we're in here, we're going to go click on the tab that says careers at the top. So now that we've clicked on the careers, you're going to look down at the tabs in the middle of the page and you're going to see Maryland career clusters as a tab. Let's click on that tab. Now, since we picked welding, it was in construction and development. So we're going to click on construction and development. And here we go with a bunch of careers. There's 64 that we may be interested in. So we're gonna scroll down. And Jane is going really fast, but that's because Jane knows W is near the end of the alphabet to see if we see anything with welding. And there is second to last welder. We're gonna go ahead and click on that. So now we have at a glance and we can see different things about the welder. Now make sure, and here's where we're gonna take a pause for a minute. We're gonna click back to our form and we're gonna click on question six. It says, uh, name that career. Well, that career is welding. So now question seven says, after reading about the career, now you can also listen, there's videos that you can listen to. What aspects of this career do you enjoy? Because the key is when you're picking a career to last a lifetime, there's some truth to the saying where they say, if you pick something you enjoy, it doesn't feel like work. If you love what you do, it makes it easier. So you gotta make sure that you're gonna enjoy this career that you've chosen. So looking at welding, we're gonna go now go back to career cruising and we're gonna look at welding. Well, let's go through the basics. Welders join metal together to make everything from bridges to skyscrapers to ships. They heat the edges of two pieces of metal using gas or electrical circuit and then press them together. That's what welding is. So, for example, if you hate the heat, I'm not so sure welding would be a good job for you because you're dealing with nothing but heat. You have to make that metal so hot that it liquefies to join them together. So it has some core tasks down here. Arc welders use electricity to melt the edges of the two metal objects. Gas welders use a blowtorch. Uh, number three, may melt in a third, a third piece of metal to act as a sort of glue. Let's see. That's what plumbers do. Plumbers do a lot of soldering when they used to have the metal uh, copper lines for hot water. They used to have to solder the pipes together. So this is some information. If you look at the workplace, most work in the manufacturing and construction industry. When you're doing welding, you're exposed to smoke, dirt, and intense heat. Potential hazards include burns from torches and heated metal. The work is physically demanding. Most work a five day, 40 hour week, but over time is sometimes necessary. Need to be physically fit, have hand-eye coordination, Work well with your hands, comfortable with heights, because sometimes you're working on large buildings and you could be pretty high up there working on, working on that. But I will say that's why they get paid as well as they do. Yeah, since and, you mentioned how much they get paid, uh, why don't we check that out? Because, you know, that's a perk to a job that you have to be able to be happy with how much you're making. Absolutely. And the great thing is you're right here on the left. We have all these different links. And one of the links is earnings. So I can click on that. I mean, you can see down here, just at a glance, you can see right here, it's this earnings range. And it says they make between 11 and $25 an hour. So that gives you just the basics. Or you can click on earnings. It kind of gives you a little more detail. <clears throat> and so the key there is you're learning the entry wage, which is down low where you can see it. I was scrolling down to a chart because I'm a person that numbers jump out. I like to look at charts. Earning wage is when you first start the job. 
Once you're experienced, that's what the uh, third one is. And the median is the number in the middle. So we all know that welders are making roughly $27 an hour. I can tell you this, many welders, because it's a field that nobody is really going into, they are hurting for welders. That number has changed a lot since career cruising uh, has done some things with the numbers. I've seen way higher income. So just giving you an idea, it is a, a field because not many are going into it. The demand is getting higher and so is the pay. And then like Ms. Shuzo said earlier, they interviewed two people in this career. And any career you look at is gonna have two people and their interview. So you have JD, a female welder, and Keith, a male welder. I'm gonna look at Jamie, because again, this person's name is Jane Smith. So why don't we listen to what Jamie has to say about welding. Some of the advice I can give you is to make sure you go to school. Um, if you can, go to a two-year program in college or go to, through an apprenticeship program with a company and stay in college for four years if you can. So she's saying to further your education and get extra education on it. Right. And one of the cool things is if you chose this as a program you apply to, you will come out with your certification so you can go right into the field. But another thing we need to know about is question seven was asking about what aspects of this career do you enjoy? We need to listen to what Jane said about the likes of her job. What does she like about it? That's important to know. Okay. Let's go back to that and go back to... Nope, you're on the page over to the likes. Mm -hmm. And she has there, one of the things I like about my job is variety. I go to several different job sites at the zoo and I do several different jobs. The other thing I like is working with my hands. And also I like the finished product. Once I finish a job, I get to stand back and see what it looks like. So maybe for this one, we'll go back to the form. What aspects of the career do you enjoy? working with there's a lot of people who do artwork with welding as well they meld different metals together to create beautiful artwork so now we're on to question eight click on the education tab what education program types of classes are required for this career and you're going to notice we worded it that way because different places require different education and different programs. And you gotta start thinking about what programs or what classes you need to take to get there. So notice in the first sentence, it does say for welding, there's no educational requirements if you wanna become a welder. However, competition for welding jobs keeps increasing. Employers now prefer if you have a high school diploma and some formal training in welding. And that's what this program would give you. It would give you some certifications in welding to get you started in that career. So basically with welding, there is no formal education requirement. However, if you want to be paid more, you need to have some experience. And that's where this uh, program comes in hand with the CTE program is it will give you the experience and you will come out certified. Because if you're already certified, then you can make more money. And like Janie said in her video earlier, she encourages you to not only get your high school diploma, but go and get more training in welding and get that college diploma too in some program that is focused in the field. Okay, so now that we know that, let's go back to question eight on the form. Uh, one more thing, I'm sorry, Ms. Truzel. It does say here that um, you can also take a full-time program in welding. These are offered at vocational and technical institutes, two-year colleges and private welding schools. Just wanted to throw that in there too. Now I'll go back. Okay. What education program types of classes are required for this career? We'll say there is no no formal education necessarily needed, but it would benefit the person to have some sort of program or as was said on the screen, I'm going to take it right from here. You can also go to a full-time welding program, a vocational school, or a private welding school. So I'm going to take that and copy it. 
and make that part of my answer. And the key is the reason why some of you may be going, well, why wouldn't they require education? A lot of companies would do training on site where they would teach how to weld, but they prefer to not have to do that process, which is why they'd rather you come with the experience because then they can hire you as a worker and they don't have to worry about training you. Okay, so now for question nine, it says select the high schools that offer the classes you need for your career. The high school that we need to apply to is North Point. And from looking at our information from before, we know North Point offers it. We also know that all the North Point, all the programs that are offered in North Point, we have to apply to going into our ninth grade year. So if I'm an eighth grader, I'd be applying for it this year. And when is that date that we can start applying, Ms. Truesdale? November 23rd, Monday, November 23rd. That's the Monday before Thanksgiving break. The application opens up. Okay. So now we're going to question 10. Do you need to apply for a program housed by another school for your career path? Example, culinary arts housed at North Point. Well, being that uh, the school that I work at, to be able to attend North Point, they have to apply. In the welding program, even if I were at Davis and I was zoned to go to North Point, to be in the welding program, I would still need to apply. And that's why those stars are so important. It doesn't matter if that's your school that you're zoned for. If there is a star next to it, you have to apply to be a part of that program. So anyone who's choosing this, even if North Point is your zone school, you have to apply. So we're gonna click yes. And because we clicked yes, it drops down to another question. If yes, what high school do you need to apply to? You already said North Point is the high school that I would have to apply to. So now we're to question 12. What pathway do I plan on following to graduate high school? Yes, you can complete a dual pathway. And you may be going, what do you mean by a pathway? I'm not sure of that. Well, we have another paper that will show you that, another attachment. Okay. And this attachment is called the graduation status report. And what this shows, it shows all the different pathways and all the classes that you will need going into high school. And for right now, we're just gonna focus on the, the right side, not the left side. So we have our graduation pathways. We're gonna choose one of the following options. The first pathway is world language. That is what is required for most college bound students. If you plan on going to college, colleges require two years of world language, Spanish, French. So that is one pathway. If you've already decided, well, I'm going to college, I'm not gonna take up a CTE program. That's one pathway. And I'm gonna put this out there. When it comes to world language, if you are someone that wants to apply to a four year school straight out of high school, all of your colleges you're applying to are gonna want you to take at least two years of a foreign language, unless it's a community college. We have advanced technology, and you have to take two credits of advanced technology to be able to take that pathway. Or career and technical education completer, also known as our CTE programs. So you're picking one of those three ways, world language, advanced technology, or CTE. Well, being that we're going into welding, I would, Ms. Smith, would be choosing CTE. Now, the other key is, well, Ms. Smith may be saying, well, I've already taken one year of Spanish. I plan on taking the second year of Spanish. That is where you become a dual program. You're going to take the world language piece as well as do a CTE program. And just so you students understand this, this form that we're using right now, this is the form that your counselors in high school will be using with you when you're kind of going through each year and you're picking off the classes that you're going to be uh, going and taking, you check off the classes as you finish them. We'll talk more about that later, but then you'll also be choosing one of those three pathways to graduation, or like Ms. Juzo was saying earlier, you could take two, maybe world language and a CTE program, and that's okay. Okay, it just makes you more uh, marketable to colleges because you have dual pathways. 
Okay, so now we've decided that we're going to be dual program people. So we go back. Question 12, and we would check CTE and world language. Now for question 13. How many credits do I need to graduate from high school? That's important to know because as many of you have seen or may know if someone has graduated early, it's all about getting enough credits because summer school does offer, summer school is not just for someone who may have struggled in a class. They also offer classes during the summer that you can take so you can get done early. So let's go ahead back to that same sheet. Okay, so I'm gonna go through um, what you need to graduate high school. To start off, the first thing I see on the sheet is high school graduation requirements of 23 credits. So you need 23 credits to graduate. Now I'm going to look down the left side of the form that we talked about earlier. For English, I need four credits. English one, English two, English three, and English four. Each one of those classes counts for one credit. So when you add that up, that's four credits. You need to take English every year you're in high school. Social studies, you need three credits. You'll take LSN, government, in your ninth grade year, then US history in your 10th grade year, and then world history in your 11th grade year. Means you don't have to take another um, social studies class in 12th grade if you don't want to, but you can and count it towards an elective. The next one is math. Math, you have um, three credits that you need, algebra one, algebra, another algebra class, it could be honors, it could be algebra on level, and geometry. So you need those three classes to graduate. Now, you need those three classes, but you must enroll in a math course every year of high school. So if you're in high school four years, you're taking four years of math. And if you have questions about math and what math you're at now compared to where you're gonna be next year, because some students, if I'm in, for example, if I'm in algebra one right now in eighth grade, I'd probably be going into geometry honors in high school. If I'm in eighth grade on level math this year, I'd probably be going into algebra one when I get to high school. So you'll talk to your counselors about what math you'll be going into next year. And I'm gonna put a little blurb in for your math and language arts classes right here. Your teachers will be reinforcing, especially those of you in on grade level, that this is the time where you have to do really well because if you don't do well in eighth grade on grade level class, then you may have to take an algebra one class that takes up an elective because it's offered during two periods instead of just one. It's called foundations of algebra. So you wanna make sure that you're doing well, especially during this hard time of virtual learning to make sure that you can go right into algebra one and you don't lose an elective. Next on our list is science. Just like social studies in science, you take three credits. Um, earth systems, usually what you take in ninth grade. Biology is usually what you take in 10th grade and then chemistry. If you're someone that is applying to the, well, not applying because you don't have to apply to it. If you're someone that is doing a project lead the way biomed, you would have to start off in biology for your ninth grade year. And again, your counselors will go over this with you. So again, three credits of science. You don't have to do a fourth. So you don't have to take a fourth one going into your, your senior year, but you can if you want to. Next up, we have our PE and health. As I said earlier, in ninth grade, you have a half credit of PE and a half credit of health. Most students take it in ninth grade. Some of you might be taking it in 10th or 11th grade, and that's fine. Just know that you have to have at least a half credit of PE and a half credit of health to graduate. Does not mean you have to take it more than once. So after you take it in ninth grade, you don't have to take it again. But if you want to, there are other PE classes available to you, like advanced PE and weight training that you can take after you take that P initial PE credit. Next, we have a your fine art credit, which is one credit. It could be any fine art class, arts, performing art, chorus, band, um, theater, those are all considered fine arts. One credit, one class, and that covers that requirement. Next, we have technology. You have to take one credit of technology going into high school. There are multiple, there are, there are multiple classes you can take that are technology classes. One would be foundations of technology. One would be exploring computer science. And then off the top of my head, I can't tell you right now, but there is one that is a computer science um, 
honors level class that you could take that would count for that credit as well. And then that brings us to financial literacy, okay? Financial literacy is a class that every student has to take before they graduate high school. Most students take it in their 11th grade year. Um, sometimes they offer it during the summer. You have to talk to your counselors about that as well. A financial literacy is a class that you'll have to take. Oh, I did forget about one thing, I'll go back to this. There is the introduction to engineering design class that can be taken and that counts towards a technology credit as well. So that covers all the classes on the left. So you take those classes, you then add in your, either your two years of uh, credits of world language or your classes that you take for your CTE program. And then there's gonna be a certain classes that are counted as electives. So for example, if I'm someone that took three years of social studies, and then I take a fourth year of social studies, it wouldn't go in the social studies column because those are all filled up. So that fourth year of social studies would be counted as an elective. So all the additional classes you take would be counted as electives and you need to get to that minimum of 23 credits. Now, some students graduate with 27 credits or 28 credits, and that's okay because some of those students are gonna go in the extra mile because they wanna get those AP classes in their senior year and kind of build up their resume for applying to colleges. Yes, because when I added them up real quickly, it's 18 credit hours that you must take of all the things that are mandatory. So at least five elective credit hours that you'll be taking. And that's where these other programs come in, whether it's two credit hours of the world language or two of the advanced technology, that's where you pull the other five from. Mm -hmm. And your special interest, if you're in band, chorus, theater, any of that becomes part of your electives. So if you're someone that's in theater arts, you'll take theater arts your first year, and then you'll take, let's say, acting one your second year, that would count towards an elective and so on and so forth. And the same for those students that are in chorus or band that they go four years going in those classes as well. And again, please talk to your counselors because they'll be going over this with you every year because before you graduate, they need to make sure that everything's checked off. This way, there are no classes that you still have to get into or still have to complete before graduating. All right, so lastly, we're gonna go back to that form sheet again. And so, how many credits do I need to graduate from high school? Well, going back to this. Oops, wrong one. There you go. 23 credits. So, I'm going to mark 23. And then we're going to hit submit. And we have completed our career cruising piece of picking a cluster and deciding where we may want to go and what pathway we want to go through high school with. So now the next piece of this is to select the actual courses. So I'm going back to career cruising. In order to select the courses, I would go to my plan. So my plan is always underneath your name. So this is, there's Jane, Jane Smith. I'll click on my plan. And then I'm going to go to down here you have all the different left uh, links. I'm gonna to go to my education plan. So again, my plan, then my education plan. And then you'll see all four years come up, ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade. For this presentation, we're gonna focus on ninth grade. So you can pick the classes that you think you need going into your ninth grade year. Okay. And basically this will help organize you. So that way, when you get that actual course selection sheet, you've already done the hard thinking. And now all you have to do is basically initial next to the ones you would like to take. And Ms. Drusen, you brought up a very good point. This is not your course selection. We are just giving you practice. This is not gonna mean that you're taking these classes going into your ninth grade year. This is just practice through career cruising. So I'm gonna first click on add course for ninth grade. It says, pick your subject area. So I always like to start off with our core classes. I'm going to start off with language arts. So I'm going to go down and find language arts. Well, in high school, it's not called language arts. In high school, it's called English. So we're going to find English on here. There's English. I click on that. 
So you're going to see that there are multiple choices and it's going to, at first, you're not going to know to be a little overwhelming because every class offered in the high school is on here. We're going to focus on the classes that are offered in ninth grade. If you remember from before, we had English one as our ninth grade, our first class in English. And if you want, you can always go back as you're doing this. You can always go back to that form that we gave you and you can see, hey, I'm in English one. I'm going to be taking English one for my first year in high school. Then the only thing you have to figure out is, am I doing English 1A or English 1H? Ms. Truesdale, can you tell me which one's which? H stands for honors. So if you are in accelerated language arts right now, gifted or accelerated, you would take the H. If you are on on grade level, you will take the A. Okay. So I'm going to say for Jane Smith, she's going to be taking honors. And then once you click on it, it's going to show over here on the left here, well, on, the, on the right, I should say, a little box comes up. So it's not done yet. You still have to click select course. So once I clicked on it, do it again. I'm going to click select course. And then you're going to see that pop up here. And it shows you that's a one credit class and it's English one honors. Ms. Truzel, which one should I go to next? Math. The, I always do the ones that I have to take so that way I make sure that I put them into my schedule. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna again, click on subject area and I'm gonna go to math. Okay. So Ms. Truzel, Jane Smith is currently in Though she's in honors for language arts, she's in on grade level math this year as an eighth grader. So where should she go? So, so then she would just click algebra one. Okay. And if Jane Smith was in algebra one now, where would she go? Geometry H. Okay, and there's geometry H down there, but we're saying that we're going into algebra one because Jane is in on grade level math. Next, we need our science. Okay. Let's select the subject area, go to science. And we said it was earth science for freshmen normally. Right. And Jane Smith is not taking biomed. If Jane was taking biomed, where would she end up picking? I believe it's biology H. Yes. So we're gonna go earth systems. I think it's, let's see, there we go. I believe they call it earth systems now and the program of studies, but on this it's called earth and space science still. So we will pick that. On grade level would be A, mm -hmm. enrichment would be H. Thank you. And for Jane Smith, we're gonna say on grade level, the only thing that she has that's honors is language arts. Everything else is on grade level for this student. Okay. Then what will be next? We need our social studies, LSN, local, state, and national government. Okay. And this is a course, just like with Algebra 1, LSN is the course that you have to take the state uh, mandated test and pass to be able to get your diploma and graduate high school. So, I have social so we're going down right. to L. Okay, and like I said before, Jane Smith is on grade level and they're recommending her for on grade level for ninth grade. So I'm gonna click on LSN government A. Now you might ask, cause I know this, I was asking this question myself in my head. There are two LSN government A's, which one do I pick? Pick the it one. It doesn't matter. Well, for this, it doesn't matter. You're right. But it would be the one with the numbers at the end. So it would be with the one, one at the end. Okay. Okay. So I have all my core classes. Now, where do I go next, Ms. Truesdale? We need to pick our, because we're going to do the PE and fit for life piece as freshmen. So we need to pick that. Okay. Because we're going to get it done and over with. So Ms. Truzel, is that something that I have to do my ninth grade year? You do not have to do it 
Because if you're someone that goes into band and you're taking like the project lead away and you have to get that biology in, it may not fit into your schedule as a freshman. And that's okay, you can take it later. But we're gonna act like we're taking it now. So we're gonna go ahead and put it in now. Okay. I'm just trying to find the health. Phys ed. <laughs> Got it. Okay, so this one has just it for life and that's fine. So we can click on that. That's our PE, by the way. Good for Life is PE. And you can see when you click on it, it tells us here it's a half credit class, 0.50. And the, key, and the key is, which we have not mentioned, you're trying to get to seven credits because all the high schools offer seven periods a day, except for North Point offers eight periods. Okay, so now I'm gonna be going and looking for my health. I'm gonna go back to PE. So obviously when I looked at it before, the P-H-Y-E-D with lowercase caps. had just that one class. So now I'm gonna do all caps. And that will have more of a selection. You can see a lot of PE classes that are like the advanced PE class, but right now we're just looking for health. And there we go. And again, multiple healths here. Go with the one that has a number at the end. So I'll just take this one and make sure it says credit to half credit. So there you go. So this is a half credit health class. Okay, so now I have so my now, health on my PE. So now when you add that up, we're up to five credits. It adds it up and you can see it at the top. So now we get two electives. Well, because I said I was gonna be a dual enrollment student, that means I need a world language. Okay. Yeah, we got to the very bottom, world language. And I'm in so, Spanish one right now, so I'm going to take Spanish two. Okay, so Ms. Truzel, now that I've done Spanish two, what's next? So now we want to make sure that we get our technology credit that we need, because as you can see, we have our fit for life. We have our world language because we're going to be a dual enrollment. So now we're going to get that technology credit and our fine arts credit. Okay. We're at North Point, so we would have eight credits. If we were just going to another high school, then we'd only select seven credits. So we're gonna go into the fine arts. Now this is where I get to choose what I want to do. There are lots of different classes that I could take that's a fine art. I can do art one. I can't take any of the advanced art classes. Like I can't do photography. I can't do painting, anything like that until I take art one. So, but art one would be one I can take because it's the base, it's the prerequisite to all those other higher ones. But I could also do, let's see, if you're someone that goes to McDonough, you could take class piano one. I don't know what other schools offer that. Um, theater, schools have theater arts. I want to pick the air arts. I want to pick that as my my art. And now that since I am applying to North Point, well, I'm going to North Point. Now remember, students, I'm applying to North Point. Doesn't mean I'm definitely getting in. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So, but this is just a plan, just so we can have it set up for if we do, this is what we would take. And then the other one you said, Ms. Ruzo, was technology? Yes, because based on if you're interested in any of these plans, um, for example, since I chose, we chose welding, I could go to North Point's website, look at the CTE programs there, and it actually has the four years of high school mapped out on it, and it'll help you select what courses you need to take. And as a freshman in high school, they recommend getting all your electives out of the way. You're fit for health, you're... Um, fine arts and your technology piece. So we're going to sign up for our technology piece. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and choose tech ed. And I'm going to pick foundations of technology, your basic tech class. And as I said earlier, you can do engineering design. And then there's also 
exploring computer science. So foundation of technology is now there. Okay. So now we've created a nice plan for our ninth grade year of school. And if you're someone that is going to another school other than North Point, you would only have seven credits, not eight credits. Okay, so now that we've picked out what our course selection would be for a, our freshman year, we're going to show you another way to help you decide the next four years of your life if you've chosen a CTE program route. So next, we're going to go to uh, ccboe.com, and we're going to click on the CTE showcase. So I'll Go back to it just so they can see from the beginning. So go on to ccboe.com, go to departments, career and technical education, And then I'm going to go to the CTE Showcase, CTE Showcase tab. which is right here. And the coolest thing about this is it pulls up all of the programs that are offered in Charles County. Now, one program that we didn't highlight that shows up on here, because it's not in a cluster yet, because it's brand new this year, is the dance program application. You can see right there where it says apply in eighth grade. We have a dance program. It's actually housed at McDonough High School. It does require an application process. So we wanted to make sure that we gave it a little blurb as well that you can apply to it. Now, the coolest thing here is you can see it's showing you your 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade year. If you chose this as your CTE program, these are the courses that you would take through your four years of high school. Now we're going to go back because we're going to look at the welding program, the one we actually chose to go through and do all of this with. And you're going to notice each program is listed there as he scrolls down. Now, one thing I want to mention is that so each program is listed. You can watch the video by clicking on play or you can click on the title of the program and it opens up another page with more information, which we're about to do with welding. Scrolling down. And there we are, welding's at the very end. So we're not going to watch the video. I'm just going to click on the welding. So it gives the program description again. And then if you scroll down again, it tells you the certifications that you could leave with. Now, notice it says possible because you have to pass the test to get certified. But these are all the certifications that are offered to you as a student if you would make it into this program. And here it shows you all the courses you would have to take. Those in green are your required courses. You can't graduate without them. Those in yellow are for the program, the welding program. Those in blue are the electives that you get to choose. Now the electives is where we were throwing in our world language piece so we could become dual program certified. We could take our Spanish one in ninth grade year, Spanish two in 10th grade year. You can add your other pieces that you would enjoy doing, other electives you may want to try, more physical education if you'd like to take it, whatever the case may be. But it will help you plan out your four years. One thing to keep in mind that we didn't mention earlier is that the programs we were looking at right here, these are all programs you're applying to in your eighth grade year and you have to apply to them. If you go back up the top, you'll see a blue tab a gold tab and a red tab. The gold tab is for the programs that you apply to in your 10th or 11th grade year. I'll click on that for a second. That would be your pharmacy tech, physical rehabilitation, automotive tech, HVAC. Those are the programs we mentioned earlier. And then lastly, <clears throat> we have the programs that you don't have to apply to. Computer science, business management, ROTC, project lead the way biomed, engineering, pro start. I'm going to click on biomed for once a quick second. Because it describes the program. It also tells you what classes, just like Ms. Shuzo said earlier, you should be taking through all four years of high school. It gives you an idea and what, how much room you have for electives. 
Now we've shown you how you can explore the different CTE programs, seeing a video about them, and also seeing what you would be required to take in high school to make it through the program. So now's a chance where you can explore it more before you make those tough decisions. So make it a point to go to the CTE showcase and look at all the different programs, watch the videos, and do your research as to what classes you'll have to take. And again, if you have any questions, please reach out to your school counselors.